Go Ichinose is a legend in the Japanese video game music industry. He was the lead composer from Pokemon Gold and Silver, released in 1999, to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, released in 2022. For context, that's 20 games in over 23 years. Today, I'll be analyzing arguably one of his most famous compositions, National Park from Pokemon Gold and Silver, and their remakes, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. More specifically, I'll be analyzing, one, how this piece is contextually perfect for its time and place in the game, and two, how music technology of the time influenced the harmony and counterpoint of this piece. And with all that out of the way, let's jump into the theory. The song starts off with this very pretty intro. We start with F minor 7, then go to E7, and then we have this A flat sus over E flat chord. Now, with just these three chords, it's kind of ambiguous as to what tonic is. The sheet music makes it even harder to tell with all of these accidentals, but the key signature is four flats, so my best guess would be F minor. Something we can concretely observe is this chromatic walk down in the bass line of the introduction. This is very important because it preps our ear for chromaticism being a very common theme throughout the rest of the piece. Next is this crazy arpeggiated line. Here, I think Go Ichinose plays with the idea of musical gravity. The ascending melodic line makes me think of something lifting off the ground and ascending into the sky. And this makes sense in context of the game because players encounter many flying type Pokemon in National Park, like Pidgey, Hoot Hoot, Ladybug, and Butterfree. This section is written in C sharp minor, but we don't really feel like the key has changed from F minor because tonic wasn't really well defined beforehand. The introduction section ends with a G-sharp 7 leading us to our new tonic, D-flat. This is a 5-7-1 no matter which way we look at it, as G-sharp 7 is the dominant 7 chord in C-sharp minor, and A-flat 7, the enharmonic equivalent to G-sharp 7, is the dominant 7 chord in D-flat major. While this 5-7-1 movement is not a cadence, it still serves as a good transition from the introduction to the body of the piece. As mentioned before, we kick off the body section in the key of D-flat major with this very pretty 1 to minor 4 progression, D-flat major 7 moving to G-flat minor. To me, this progression is kind of ambiguous, it sounds both happy and sad at the same time, sentimental if you will, and this progression adds to the chromaticism theme as the top notes of the chord alternate between C and D-flat. After this repeats a couple of times, we're now introduced to the main motif of the song. This part of the song is full of really cool things, so let's dive right into it. First off, the chord progression. We have G flat major 7, G flat minor major 7, F minor 7, and B flat 7. And oh man, is that minor major 7 chord spicy. It's the first time I've ever come across a minor major 7 chord in the wild, but it really makes sense contextually because we see another chromatic walk down looking at the thirds of these three chords. To me, the minor major 7 chord adds a lot of nostalgia, as if you were an aspiring Pokemon trainer, far from home, homesick, but still eager to explore the world. This chord progression repeats throughout the rest of the song, so let's move briefly to the counterpoint. If we look at the transcription of this piece, we can see a ton of contrary motion between the melody and the bass. Pokemon Gold was originally made for the Game Boy system, which is a gaming console with only four sound channels, meaning that it was only capable of producing four sounds at once. What this meant for video game music composers at the time was often having to break up chords into arpeggios so they could use the other sound channels for things like percussion. National Park is a perfect example of this, as we see the bass line is entirely broken up chords with the exception of some passing tones. Going back to the introduction section, we can see that Ichinose wanted to use these full, lush chords but was limited by the number of sound channels, so in order to give the illusion of all the notes being played at once, he quickly arpeggiated the chords. All of these elements together make National Park both a perfect piece for Pokemon Gold and a good example of how music technology impacted video game music composing in the 90s. If you're unfamiliar with early Pokemon soundtracks or 8-bit music in general, I really encourage you to check it out. 
8-bit composers like Go Ichinose are so limited by the amount of voices, but still manage to create some of the most interesting and innovative melodies and harmonies. Thank you.